Welcome, I'm Mrs. Stahl, and this is Bella, who is our beagle, and she's here uh, with a little bribery. We've got some peanut butter on her toy, uh, and that'll keep her in the, in the picture frame. I want to welcome especially the children who are part of St. John Newman's Youth Faith Formation Program and their parents if they're watching. We start uh, each of our family faith gatherings with an opportunity to identify God sightings. And if you remember, God sightings are, uh, are times when we see God in our lives, either through other people, through nature, through sacraments. I am going to invite you today to consider a God sighting of the last week, especially as you were quarantined um, during this virus. So where have you seen God during this pandemic? I'm going to suggest that I have seen God in the love and care of my family and friends and in the scientific minds of the doctors and nurses and, other, and others who have um, tried to keep us healthy. So to look at this a little closer, I'm going to read a Bible story, and this is from the Book of Bible Stories by Loyola Press, and this Bible story is about Jesus healing a man who is paralyzed. Uh, it is from the uh, Gospel of Mark, chap uh, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. We'll do a lot to help our friends, won't we? We help them when they ask for it, or even when they are afraid to ask. We stick up for them when other people treat them badly, but most of all, we listen to them. We do anything for our friends. Would you lower your friend through a roof into a big crowd of people? Maybe if Jesus was in the middle of that room, you would. This is what some friends did for a man who was very sick. He was paralyzed. He couldn't walk at all. His friends heard that Jane, her, his friends heard about Jesus and wondered if he could help their friend. They heard that Jesus was teaching people in the home of Peter, one of the fishermen who had decided to follow Jesus and learn from him. So they found Peter's house. It was true. The place was full of people because Jesus was teaching inside. You couldn't even get through a door or a window. In those days, houses were made out of bricks and wood. The roofs were flat which, uh, and, the, and were made with grass, sticks, and dirt. The friends carried the paralyzed man on a mat. They were sure they could help their friend. But there were so many people in the house and the doors were so narrow, there was no space for them. So up to the roof they climbed. Scripture says, unable to get Jesus because of the crowd, they opened up the roof above Jesus. After they had broken through, they let down the mat on, the, on, on which the paralytic was lying. You can imagine the surprise of the crowd listening to Jesus when the dust and grass started falling around them from the ceiling. And then there was a man on a mat being lowered right down in the middle of the room. When Jesus saw this, he admired the faith of the man's friends. And he said to the paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven. What a strange thing to say. Jesus had told the man that his sins were forgiven, not that his body was healed. And only God could forgive sins. Who was this Jesus? Jesus knew what people were thinking, so he explained, but he also asked. He asked them which was easier to say to the paralyzed person, your sins are forgiven or pick up your mat and walk. The Gospel of Mark says, but that you know that the Son of Man has authority to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, rise, pick up your mat and go home. The man did just that. He stood up, picked up the mat he was lying on. Jesus healed the man's body. Everyone was amazed. They began to understand that Jesus was more than just a man. Jesus was God. And because he was God, he could forgive the man's sins too. 
The paralyzed man had a serious problem with his body. His friends believed that Jesus could fix this problem. That's why they went to all that trouble to bring him to Jesus. They probably thought that their friend's biggest problem was not being able to walk. So why didn't Jesus help with that first? Why did he forgive the man's sins before he did anything else? The friends and the sick man probably weren't even thinking about his sins. They probably weren't thinking about the ways he was separated from God or had hurt others. But Jesus knew. And Jesus knew, whoop, there goes Bella. <laughs> and Jesus knew that no matter what else was going on in the man's life, his relationship with God was the most important thing. Even if he walked again, if he was still far from God and not listening to God, his life would never be at peace, and he wouldn't be truly happy. So we can look to the Gospel of Mark to see where God is during this pandemic. God is with each of us as we love and care for our family and friends. We try to do our best to listen to our parents and to listen to the doctors who keep us healthy. They have told us to stay home, to not go to school, to not play with friends in person, we try to do this without too much sadness or complaining or anger because we know it is the best thing to do for our family and friends. God is present in this love and this self-sacrifice for God's sighting. Also, look to the friends in the story who are coming up with creative ways to get their friend healed. They're literally opening up a roof and lowering him down to get him healed. I like to think of these friends as our current day doctors and nurses who are treating the sick, who are studying the virus to come up with ways of testing for it quickly, who are studying the virus to come up with a vaccine or a cure. God gave these friends brains and energy to do this scientific work. God is present in the science and in these people, a God sighting in the pandemic. One other important lesson is that we are very busy keeping our bodies healthy. We also have to be busy keeping our relationship with God healthy. Remember to talk to God each day to pray. If you're worried or afraid or sad or angry, trust me, we can all feel that way in these weeks. Ask God to let go of those emotions and listen for his answer. Remember to say you are sorry to God for your sins. When this is all over, you can go to reconciliation again. And remember to pray for others, your parents, your family, the people who work at the grocery stores, the truck drivers, the people who work at hospitals, all the helpers trying to help. Then, look for your good things. There is good. Spe are you spending time with your family? Are you able to enjoy your family pet more? Are you able to sleep a little later more? Where is the good? Thank God for that good. So that's our lesson for today. If you would like to draw a picture of our Bible story about Jesus healing the man who could not walk, I invite you to do so. I'd love to see your pictures. Have your mom or dad send them to me by email. Uh, snap a picture and send them. Uh, T Stahl, S T H L, at sjmstcharles.org. Um, if you send it, uh, they do give us permission. We'll put it on social media because we'll share it because others want to see that too, especially the others in the parish who want to see um, you and evidence of you because we all do miss you. Parents, the gospel is from Mark 2, uh, verses 1 through 12. You can read that um, to your children again, if you'd like, or children, go online and read that yourself. Also, if you'd like Bella and I to chat with you again, let me know. Uh, she joined us for the first part. Um, I thank my producer who tried to keep her here <laughs> as best he could, too. Um, and um, I finally, in the end, have a prayer for you. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God, I ask you to be in a special way with all the children watching this video. Ease their concerns and worries. Help them know that the adults in their lives are working hard to keep them safe.
Help them know that there will be an end to this isolation. Help them know that their parish family misses them and prays for them. We ask this in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. And I hope to see you soon.